Hello everyone, back to you into today's first video. We're doing JMA Friday for today's first video, so we're going to have our regular month head, log head that we always do on a Friday with the Japanese and CFS V2 models. And this will take us into the second half of September. So we're covering the final week of August and then into uh, the first two or three weeks of uh, September. So I'll bring you up to date with the JMA and CFS V2 latest uh, in a moment. Just to say that today's second video will have a detailed look at the weather for uh, the next week to 10 days. And then this evening, we've got the final ENSO update of the year. So winter updates will be starting at Gaswell. It's uh, a week on Sunday, Sunday the 2nd of September. Uh, and ENSO always forms a big part of those winter updates because it's primarily a driver of the weather that's an important factor through the winter months. So uh, we always focus a lot on uh, what's happening in the ENSO region for those winter updates, which means there is no reason to do um, monthly solo ENSO updates. We'd just be repeating ourselves. So the final ENSO update of 2018 will be with you uh, on the ENSO updates page uh, this evening. So uh, come back for that uh, then. But before then, of course, we've got our uh, regular week to 10 day look at. I'll talk you for everything that's coming up over the bank holiday weekend at the end of this video. It's going to be a very, very busy weekend of uh, updates and videos. So despite the fact it's the bank holiday, we don't stop at Gazovitz and there will be a lot of updates coming up. Uh, this weekend. But kicking it all off really is uh, JMA Friday. So these are the 500 millibar height anomaly flowcharts from the uh, Japanese model for the Northern Hemisphere from the pole view down. So this is the North Pole of the Northern Hemisphere just here. And then the mid latitudes of the Northern Hemisphere are around there. The uh, UK is just there. These are broken down into weekly periods. The first weekly period will take us from the 24th through to the 31st of August. Blue is extrapolating to low pressure and yellow, orange, and red will be extrapolating to high pressure. So in the week ahead, we find that we've got below average heights to our north with above average heights to the south and southwest. The jet stream is coming through the country uh, rather like that. And so this is a far more unsettled week than we've had for quite a long time. Uh, you can expect showers, if not longer spells of rain, to be coming through at times during uh, this week and relatively cool temperatures as well because the air is coming out of the North Atlantic uh, from sort of Greenland that part of the Atlantic Ocean and so relatively cool uh, temperatures can be expected in the week ahead. However, we go through to week two, which is taking us from the 31st of August to the 7th of September, and we see a big change. Look at this. Above average heights are back. They're back big time, building into the UK and stretching up to Scandinavia as well. At the same time, we've got these below average heights, the unsettled conditions becoming penned in around Greenland again. Uh, the flow and the jet is like that. So, again, lots of dry weather coming up there through the first week of September, if that is right with winds generally from kind of like an easterly or possibly even southeasterly uh, direction. So that looks uh, warm and dry through the first week of September very quickly back to high pressure. And then we go through to weeks three and four, takes us from the 7th through to the 21st of September. And uh, this one, again, has above average heights over the UK, centering back to Scandinavia as well. The ridge does go into Central Atlantic too. Below average heights around Greenland, the flow and the jet continues to be pushed up to the north. So we're still on the warm side of the jet. And we're bringing in again, I would have thought, a lot of easterly winds. So the JMA is going for a very dry and warm, certainly first half of September. Remember, it's only taking us up to the 21st of September. But for the first half of September, JMA uh, today is seeing uh, a very warm and dry first half to September. Let's have a look at those temperature and precipitation uh, anomalies. So we come back to week one. This is the tropical and mid-latitude view. The British Isles is just here in the top right-hand corner of the chart as you're looking at it. Week uh, one, which is the 24th to the 31st of August, has above average heights to our west. We can't see the pole. The North Pole is uh, up here. It's off the chart. But we've already had a look at that view. So we know there is a lot of low pressure up to the north. 
off the jet stream is coming through the country like that. So it looks more unsettled and more changeable than we've had for quite a long time in the week ahead. That's backed up by the temperature anomaly. Temperature anomalies are coming out cooler than average across all parts of the UK and Ireland in the weekend. Also, much of Central Europe coming out cooler than average with the warmer than average temperature anomalies pushed right way back into the east and the southeast of Europe. It's been a very long time since we've had that setup. We haven't seen that much at all through this long, hot summer. But certainly Central, Western, Northwestern Europe looking a lot cooler uh, in the week ahead. Head. Uh, not overly unsettled, though, actually, but precipitation anomaly, despite the fact low pressure is more or less in control of the weather in weekend, uh, uh, precipitation anomalies are still coming out on the drier than average size. So it remains reasonably dry, actually, perhaps surprisingly so, given the synoptic setup. Not all that much rain being forecast by the JMA, but certainly a lot cooler and a lot more changeable compared to what we've had through much of this summer. But then week two, which takes us from 31st of August to the 7th, of September through the first week of September sees that area of above average heights building back into the UK and uh, we can't see Scandinavia but we know that high is actually centred over Scandinavia up here goes back a long way to the northeast and so that will be bringing the wind in from an easterly uh, direction you expect that to be well still very dry but you expect that to be uh, much warmer as well. And indeed, that's backed up by the forecast um, temperature anomalies uh, for the first week of September. We've gone warmer than average after that much cooler than average week one. Week two is going warmer than average yet again. The warmth returns through the first week of September and it remains dry as well. So instead of being cool and dry, as we've got in a week ahead, we go to warm and dry through uh, week two. And then weeks three and four are looking like this, with again above average heights centred almost over the top of the country. Extends over here to the east and also its centre is up to the northeast as well. The jet stream is pushed off up there somewhere. You can expect this to again be pretty warm and dry. Temperature anomalies are coming out above average, perhaps not quite as much as we had in week one, that first week of September, but nevertheless still warmer than average temperature anomalies and still significantly warmer than average through central parts of Europe uh, as well. The uh, precipitation anomaly remains dry, so this is another dry four weeks coming up if the JMA is right. Drier than average precipitation anomalies from start to finish, starting cool but becoming much warmer through the first week of September. Now, the only caveat I would put with this is that... The current spell of cooler and more unsettled conditions that we are going into now, uh, I'm not sure the JMA picked that out all that well in previous updates. So it could well be that it's got itself a bit stuck in a rut with this high pressure and it just wants to keep bringing the high pressure back. But whether it's underestimating chance of unsettled conditions, only time will tell. Let's have a look and see what CFS V2 is doing and this sort of backs up what I was just uh, talking about. So, this is the 500 millibar height anomaly uh, for week one, which takes us from the 24th of August uh, to the 30th of August. And look at this big area of below average heights that the model has got uh, to the north, extending down into the UK. The above average heights is shoved out into the Central Atlantic and also a long way to our east across Eastern Europe and Western Russia. That means the jet stream is dipping down like that. So we've got a, uh, we've got a dip in the 500 millibar flow. We've got a trough in the 500 millibar flow uh, essentially. And so that is much cooler and much more unsettled than we've have through most of this summer. Now, I'm not sure in previous uh, updates when we've been looking at the CFS V2, these weekly 500 millibar high dollars, not all that sure the CFS has really shown this level of, um, uh, of trough within the 500 millibar flow. So what's going to happen as we get through to week two is that it's very quick. You're going to want to build the ridge back. There we go. We're into the first week of September, 31st of August to the 6th of September. Sees this big ridge coming back again to our east and northeast. The so blurbridge heights are pushed off up to Greenland. 
the jet stream's going like that. So essentially it's in agreement with, with, with what the JMA is showing. That starts to bring much warmer east to south east winds. And it is very dry uh, as well in that solution. But uh, is it the fact that the models, both the JMA and the CFS, are just trying to repeat this high pressure pack because it's gone on for so long through the summer? Uh, are they sort of set on getting back to this high pressure pattern? And are they underestimating uh, the strength of the Atlantic? We're going into the end of the summer and the start of the autumn. The Atlantic will be starting to uh, rev up a little bit. We'll start to get a little bit more energy. Are these seasonal models, because this, is, this recurring high pressure has been going on really since May, are they uh, just too uh, sort of biased in favour of the high pressure coming back? Have they got themselves stuck into a rut? They can't see a way out of it. Or is this actually what is going to happen? September can be a very anti-cyclonic month. But given the fact that they have generally not been showing this uh, cooler, more unsettled spell of weather with the trough within the 500 bit of our flow that we've got at the moment, they've generally not been showing that particularly well. Uh, given that, I think we have to speak be quite sceptical about what these long-range models are doing here for September. This is week three with the CFS V2. It's the 7th to the 13th of September. And the high pressure fest just goes on. High pressure through the UK. It extends to the east and the northeast. This is identical to what we had through the dog days of summer. The trough of low pressure is pushed up around Greenland Iceland. The jet stream is up there. So again, it continues to be very dry and you will think pretty warm there as we go through uh, the second week of September. And then we're into week four, which is the 14th to the 20th of September. You've guessed it, it's still got that high pressure centred over the top of the country. I've just got to get the phone and I'll be back in a second. Right, we're back. Sorry about that. So, uh, phone interruption over. We can continue. So, uh, we were saying that um, both the JMA and the CFS are very, very set after this coming week, which will be a little bit more and settled and changeable and cooler. They're very set on getting back to high pressure really quickly, and this is the week four, 500 mil of our height, not only from the 14th to the 20th of September, and it still basically has high pressure centred over the UK and also going up to the northeast, low pressure around Greenland, Iceland, the flow of the jet is up there. So it's back and it's continuing through September, the pattern that we've had throughout the summer. Now that may be how things occur, but uh, I do think you have to be cautious about what these long-range models are showing at the moment. To me, it looks like going a little bit over top with this anti-cyclonic signal for September. I'll not be all that surprised, actually, if we have a rather more unsettled uh, month than you would think from uh, this particular update. Of course, it's only going up to, like, the 21st of September, so not going through the whole of the month. Um, but uh, I think we need to be a little bit cautious. Temperature anomalies for the weekend actually coming out really much cooler than average. This is from the 24th to the 30th of August. Look at that, the most deep green, because we haven't seen such a cold, uh, or such a cool of an average temperature anomaly on these charts for... Uh, a really long time, actually, uh, probably going back towards uh, back towards spring, I would have thought, since we had such a uh, such a cool temperature anomaly as that. Most parts of Europe also coming out very cool. And again, I have to re-emphasise the CFS at no stage over the past month has shown anything as cool as this in its updates. So the fact it's wanting to get us back to high pressure of a pattern of the summer. I think we need to be really quite cautious about that at the moment. This is week two. It's taking us from the 31st of August to the 6th of September. And this one, even this one, is coming out uh, a little bit cooler than average, despite the fact that the above average heights are coming back. So for the CFS, it's taking a long time to start warming things up. And even in week two, when we're back under the high pressure, the temperature normally still looks a little bit uh, on the cool side, actually. Uh, and then this is week three, and by then we are back to much warmer than average conditions. So the 7th to the 13th, it's kind of like... Ref, ref, 
converted itself to the default pattern of this summer, which is much warmer than average. And uh, I suspect we'll see very dry conditions as well. Most parts of Europe also coming out much warmer than average. And then these warm conditions are generally continuing into week four as well. The 14th of 20th of September still coming out uh, warmer than average. Not quite as warm as week one, but still above average overall through most parts of the country. So it takes a little bit longer than the JMA to do it, but it does eventually get itself back to the default setup of the summer, which is uh, high pressure, warm and dry conditions. Temperature uh, precipitation anomalies for the week ahead from the 24th of August to the 30th. Actually coming out a little bit drier than average, which is a bit of a surprise given we've got a trough within the 500 millibar flow. So they're probably underestimating uh, how much rain. These models uh, are probably underestimating how much rain, either from the form of showers or from the form of more persistent rain, going to be coming up in the week ahead. Uh, then we go through to week two, which is the 31st of August, 6th of September, close to average with precipitation in that week. Uh, then we're into week... Uh, free, which is coming out more or less drier than average in most parts of the country, certainly England and Wales, and then week four rounds it all off. We're back to the default setup uh, for this summer anyway, which is significantly drier than average. So if we take these models at base value, we're in for a warm and dry, certainly first half of September. We can't say if that's going to go on in the second half of September, but say for the first half of September, it's going to be significantly drier and significantly warmer warmer than average as well. And that could be how it plays out because September does tend to be a very anti-cyclonic month at times. Uh, and we had a very anti-cyclonic summer anyway. So essentially, despite this little interruption we've got in the week ahead, the JMA and the CFS want to keep this summer going extended out into September. And basically, there's no end in sight to, uh, to the warm and dry weather after this week's little interruption. But are they overplaying their hand with this high pressure? Are they trying to get themselves to the default setup of the summer because they can't see another, uh, an, another way forward, if you like. Are they underestimating the strength of the Atlantic uh, against this ridge? That's going to be fascinating to see how this plays out as we go through the first half of September. I can tell you, but within the shorter range, there is a lot of uncertainty within the GFS and the ECM and the GM. You'll know this if you've been watching the updates through this week, we have on day-to-day -day basis been seeing a lot of chopping and changing for that first week of September. So I think we need to be cautious. It's possible this is going to be an extended summer. Can happen. It happened in 2003. Happened very famously in 1959. It's possible this will be an extended summer and we'll have uh, more very warm and dry conditions through September. But just given the way they have underestimated this cooler and more changeable interlude that we've gone into for this week, uh, and it's never really been shown by these seasonal models over the past few weeks, I think we need to be careful about uh, about forecasting a very warm and dry September at this stage. So we shall wait and see, essentially. It's going to be a waiting game to see how this plays out. Coming up later on this afternoon, we're going to have your week to 10 day weather forecast update. I mean, tonight, as I said at the beginning of the video, we've got the final ENSO update of the year. Over the weekend, we've got weekend forecasts uh, and we've got more updates coming up as well this weekend. So uh, keep checking back to the channel. Sunday, we're going to have the uh, autumn forecast. That's going to be quite interesting. And a little sneak peek for winter. There's a, there's a historic video coming up for Bank Holiday Monday as well. Well, so it's all going to be happening over Bank Holiday Weekend. Keep checking back to all of the updates. But that's all for now, and thanks for watching.